Now that's a proper size mackerel. You can see, there's your fillet. Hello, welcome back to the fish locker. We're out to catch mackerel. Now, you can catch mackerel from the boat or from the shore. I'm out on the boat just simply because I've got a boat. Now, the two ways that I, two ways that I usually fish for mackerel is with sabikis like this, which are just small lures. There is a six on there, and you just fish them up and down on the bottom. You can steam around and look for things like birds and dolphins. Something that might be something that in nature that might show you that there's fish there, like gannets diving or dolphins or cormorants on the surface. I can leave those like that because as the boat rocks, it will fish the lures up and down in the water. The only way that I like to fish for them is with a lure. This is like a little little Dexter wedge, a little Toby. And this is on a hook. You wouldn't believe the number of times that I've missed bites and I've seen them watching it back when I'm editing the videos. Fishing them a single lure on a lure setup. This is a 7 to 24 gram lure rod. And I'll just fish these. Just cast and retrieve. And all it does is the little silver lure swims through the water and imitates a little bait fish. I will try to eat it. They are good sport, they are good fire, they are good fighting fish, and they taste amazing. That is what we're fishing for them for today. That is what a mackerel shoal looks like on the fish finder. See all that there? That will be bait fish, pilchards, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, the whole lot. That's what you're looking for. When fishing feathers for things like mackerel, if you don't know where in the water column they're going to be, you search out up. Oh, so much. It might be a pilchard. Oh, it's a tiny, tiny mackerel. Oh, was a tiny mackerel. It's in the bottom of the boat now. That's too small. As I was about to say, when you don't know where they are in the water column, it could be anywhere, it could be at the bottom, it could be at the top, you search the water column. By that I mean you drop right down to the bottom, give it a couple of winds, a couple of bounces, a couple of winds, a couple of bounces, all the way at the surface. That way you search the whole water column and if you find them halfway up the next time you know it it's a good chance they'll be halfway up. we're after big ones not that little tiny thing what i just caught there that little tiny one there would have been good for a live bait but not for eating i don't know if you get to see them but the reason why i thought to try this little area because there are quite a few seagulls circling round. Oh. Mackerel are a shoaling fish as well. So when you get one bite, wind it in slowly because that one fish might attract more to your hooks. Fishing with six hooks on this. So that's not a bad size one. Take that. Now I have a tough tub in the boat filled with water. What I'll do is I'll use that to keep them all in. I'll keep them in that tough tub and keep them alive until it's time to dispatch them. I'll dispatch them and bleed them. It's better for the meat. For anyone curious, we are at the end of January. Down here in Cornwall we get some of our best mackerel fishing in winter. Birds working over there. I think I'll go and try over there. I'll go. You 
do often find that the lures pick out the bigger fish. That is a lovely sized mackerel. May sing. Let's throw more. Big one and a little one. Get two or three more, that'd be perfect. See what I mean about being a shoaling fish? There's four there. All a bit small though. Because mackerel, they show up in all different sizes and I do return quite a lot of the smaller ones. If you're going to return fish, you're better off handling them as little as possible. But the myth that if you touch a fish that you kill it, it's just not true. Obviously if you drop it on a deck or you, you mess about with it unhooking it, you're not going to do it any favours. But I've seen mackerel in a shoal that have been bitten in half by a trope and they've got half their body missing and they're still swimming around. So all I do to try and make it a little bit easier and make sure that they go back better is I crush all the barbs on my sabikis, on my lures. You will lose the odd fish but it means that you can return with us easier. That there is a pilchard. I'll always wrap the lead around the handle of the reel. That way it's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't swing around everywhere, it doesn't bash it up. Now that's a proper size mackerel. That is what you would call a jumbo. And he's properly engulfed that lure. He wasn't coming off. Right, now that I've got all the mackerel that I want, right, I've already dispatched them and I've already bled them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the method on an already dead fish. So you're not seeing me kill it, I've already dispatched it. I'm just going to demonstrate the method. Right, here I always carry a tough tub with me. You can see they've already bled out into the water in there, they're already gone. What I do is, right, the first thing, taking this one here, you can see where it's cut, it's, its gills have already been sliced. All I'll do, I'll show you on this side, is you open the gill up, like that, put your knife in and just slice through the gills, like that. They will bleed out in a matter of seconds. You can see there's no blood left in there because this one's already bled. And for dispatching them, all I have is I have a spike. I'll show you here with this knife. All you do is you go in just at the back of the head like that and you give it a like that. That's it. There's no need doing anything else. That there has gone straight into the brain and severed the spinal cord there. Look. So bleeding and dispatching. Right. I have got myself down onto the shore. It is a fine day for it. And I'm just starting a little fire off. All I've got is my little offcuts or pieces of pallet. I've made like a little fire pit and I am going to, while the fire's building up, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with my mackerel. Now the way I'm going to cook them today is going to be a new way for me. It's a bit of an experiment. It was uh, Jim at Spargo's Kitchen told me about it. And I'm going to cook them in a tin. Now this is a very exclusive 
chocolates tin left over from Christmas and what I have done is inside of it inside the tin I have got some oak shavings it is oak I know because it was off an oak stump I've been working on a project in the fish locker workshop and these are the shavings that are left over from it and all I've done is I've made some mesh this is just like bird feeder mesh I just bought it in a sheet of about two meters by two meters and cut it to fit and what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to smoke them in a tin we will see how it goes I am um, yeah this is a method that Jim used to use when he was younger for smoking mackerel on the beach so I'm gonna give it a crack I'm gonna build a fire up enough so that I've got some embers and then all you do basically is you fill it the mackerel off put it on the mesh in the tin with the wood shavings put the lid on put it on the fire so oak shavings mesh little off cuts in a fire and, uh, and I've made myself up a little chopping board and I'm gonna go and sort the mackerel there's two ways I'm going to do it. I'm going to fillet some off and I'm going to butterfly one as well. For anyone who wants to know about filleting and butterflying mackerel, I have a video that I will tag in here now. That was a piece of wood there. There must have been a bit of moisture in the side of that piece of wood. I'll tag the video in here now. It is a fish filleting video. Right, filleting. Literally, all you need is a good sharp knife. And you're going to go in behind the fin and run up towards the head. So, like that. You then run in along the back. You can go all the way through. So I've literally pushed the knife all the way through. And I'm just going to run down the backbone. Now there are going to be a few bones down the centre of there and a couple of little belly bones but if you just shave them out like that and there's one fillet all you want to do is turn it over and just do exactly the same again so up and then along the back Again, this is where the bones are in here. So if you just just shave them out. There you go. There's two mackerel fillets. I'll do the rest. And there you are. You can see, scooped all the bones out. There's your fillet. All we've got is I'm going to try put the butterfly in and then we'll try these as well. One more for good luck. So there they are. All I'm going to do, put my lid on, put a couple more pieces of them. Yeah, so there we are. I'm going to time it and see how long it takes. I'm quite excited to see how this turns out. Right, that was 15 minutes so far. And I'll show you what they look like.
Right, that's been 20 minutes now, and I think, personally, I think they're done. Let's get a couple off. Now look, I've just teased them off of there with a fork. Oh, look at that, look at the juices running out of them. That is cooked perfectly. I might get the other ones on quickly actually. There we go. Put the other ones in there. And in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy those. Just look at that. Just falls off the skin. Cook really well. There isn't very much smoke in this actually. Considering how much they the skin is taking the smoke. They don't taste as strong as I thought they were going to do. Delicious, but not as strong as I thought they were going to. I think next time what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll put some sea salt and some cracked black pepper on them as well. But oh, that's delicious. The, um, the the thinner ones actually, that butterfly, that took the flavour really well. I think it's just obviously because they weren't on there for very long. They were on there for just shy of 20 minutes. Probably could have come off sooner as for, as they were cooked. But for smoking wise, I think I would um, maybe put it on the coals rather than on the fire. And um, But the rest of it, I mean look, that, it's just, it's just cooked perfectly. Nice and moist, plenty of plenty of, of oil and juices still in there, and with a really light, smoky taste. So it was delicious. I've um, been a little bit greedy. I've, I've finished all these off, and I've still got I've still got three fillets left in there. So while the sun is just about to drop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly finish them other fillets, and then uh, yeah, definitely do this again. But like I say, um, I think they cooked a bit hot because they were on the fire. I think if it had been on coals, it would have been better. Um, on coals and longer on a lower heat. With a little bit of cracked black pepper as well would have been delicious. This is one of the things to mention as well. I mentioned it in other videos. If you're going to be putting rocks in a fire, on a fire, around a fire, like I have here with these, Make sure you collect them from above the high tide line because if the rocks that have been submerged in water they can be impregnated with water, they can have water inside of them. When you put them in a fire like that the water turns to steam and the rocks can explode. These were all collected from up there. Also, <laughs> you're going to be handling this. I'm not going to lie, that's hot. <laughs> Let's have a look. Fantastically. Yeah. That was 10 minutes. 10 minutes and it's cooked perfectly, but to get more of a smoke on it, I would leave it for longer at a lower heat. You see how the fire is now? Yeah, if I was going to do this again, I would put it on there 
because like you say 10 minutes and these I've cooked perfectly on the inside Absolutely delicious. In fact, I think I prefer these ones to the first ones. Mm. Yeah, let's get them lifted off onto the place. I'd almost forgot I did bring a little butter dish. Fresh caught oak smoked mackerel with melted butter. It's like something you'd expect from Max and Spencer's. That is just amazing. I do prefer the second batch when all the shavings had already burnt down but curiously the second batch all of them stuck to the mesh I don't know why the first batch all of them came off the mesh second batch of all all stuck on look but yeah that's all it was look just a bit of mesh and some shavings still the odd bone <laughs> and a second one well I hope you enjoyed joining me I hope this has been interesting for you I hope it's given you some type of an idea of it this is the first time I've done this it was uh, it was an idea given to me by Jim from Spargo's Kitchen it's something that we will definitely be doing here and um, survival situation or like just a bit of camping and you fancied some smoked I imagine you'd be able to do most things bacon in that would be a myth that's next time I go camping that's what I'm doing bacon smoky bacon but yeah mackerel fresh caught off the boat it, it's not even it wasn't even an hour old amazing this was a new one for me learnt some lessons I'm definitely going to do um, definitely going to do this again like I say it's somewhere cracked sea salt and cracked black pepper on there as well lower heat uh, less shavings longer 10 minutes they cooked 10 to 12 minutes and they cooked uh, the first batch was 20 minutes second batch was 15 I hope you've enjoyed joining me I hope this has been interesting all the very best take it easy